Good evening, everyone. Um, thank you, Jali. Thank you, Silvana, for introducing me. So tonight, um, I will be giving a red list update of uh, South African plants uh, with a focus on the Africa's uh, iconic proteas. So I will refer to all the proteaceous species as proteas. Please do not get confused. But before I, I get on to the main focus of the day, I'm just going to give a quick summary or update of the national uh, red listing changes that we we have um, updated in the with the last update. So what I, I would like to you to 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 what I'd like to show you uh, in this pie chart is to show you that uh, we've updated uh, close to about two thousand uh, species. And out of the 2,000 species, uh, these are the changes that we have uh, picked up. A big proportion of um, species that were updated were previously overlooked. So we had to re, uh, reassess them. And um, about 23% uh, of those species had uh, the genuine increase in threats. And 22% uh, of those had new information. So we were also able to um, update them. So I won't go uh, into details on, on the changes, but I'll move on to the main focus for the day. Um, giving a background on protease species, um, about 80 genera species, I mean, 80 genera of uh, protease species are, are found uh, throughout the world. And 14 of those uh, okay, are our natives to Southern Africa mainly in the Fengos uh, biome. And um, a, others are scattered in grasslands uh, in the eastern part of uh, South Africa, in uh, also other neighboring provinces, I mean, neighboring uh, countries, that is your Lesotho, Eswatini, Mozambique, and Zimbabwe. So um, a first attempt to evaluate the the red list status of proteases was in the early 2000s after a, during the Protea Atlas project, which was led by Tony Rebello. And um, during the Protea Atlas project, they managed to find uh, species that were thought to be extinct. And uh, also new species were discovered during that time. Um, before I show you the statistics of uh, the updates on the Proteaceae, I uh, first want to um, explain how uh, the process that was followed to define subpopulations, especially to be able to um, define subpopulations for the criteria C and to be able to uh, calculate, I mean, uh, calculate the number of population as well as to identify the largest subpopulations that is mostly used for criteria C uh, when we follow the red list guidelines. So uh, what Lisa did was um, she set up uh, buffers around points. And um, when the points were overlapping, she would then uh, draw a polygon or she would dissolve them and make them into a polygon uh, for us uh, to be able to identify those as subpopulations. So what she used was um, in looking at the dispersal of seeds. So if maybe for example, um, plants had large nuts or are uh, dispersed by um, ants, she would uh, use a, dis a, a, a distance of 250 because the dispersal is very short. And uh, for species that are uh, wind pollinated, the, the seeds where are wind pollinated, then she would give a bigger um, distance around those points and uh, buffer around those points. So uh, an example here that you see on the slide is a of um, a species, Protea denticulata, which is wind dispersed. Uh, around these points, like, the data that we used came based mostly from the Protea atlas and also from INET as well as from the volunteer. So most of the points will be in uh, one area because of repeated uh, monitoring and also the number of species that they have encountered. So around those points, she put a buffer and um, we, she ended up getting two subpopulations for, for this species. 
So um, getting into the statistics uh, here, I'm just showing you the number of endemics per province, focusing on South Africa, as you can see, Sorry, Klingi, you, you muted. Oh, sorry. Must I go back? No, no, that just on that slide, thank you. Oh, okay, thanks. So in this slide, um, I'm showing the proteaceous species, which are um, endemic and non-endemic to South Africa. As you can see from the, um, the bar graph, the Western Cape has the highest number of um, endemic species is expected because it's the Cape floristic region and it's uh, one of the biodiversity hotspots. So um, what you see here as well is, um, you, can, you will note that KwaZulu-Natal, Omalanga and Northern Cape has the least uh, number of endemic species and the Eastern Cape is the second most uh, province with the highest number of um, endemics. So I'm gonna to get to the changes that we have um, observed when we're updating the proteasy. Uh, what you would notice from this graph is that, um, oh, first of all, um, just want to um, notify you that all the updates that we have done are not yet available in the Redlist website because when we finished the project, um, the, uh, the, the website was already um, updated. But if you want to see the statistics, especially for global species, you can visit the IUCN website, but also you get updates for the endemics of South Africa. Um, from this graph, you will see that, um, first of all, that I want to note is that the species that were previously listed as uh, critically endangered uh, have decreased. The decrease was due to um, that we reassess the species we recently got information on uh, the straight, either they were overlooked when they were assessed or um, it's species that were uh, classified as critically endangered using climate change models. And when there was monitoring over time, there were changes. So for that reason, uh, we saw uh, that there's no need to put them under critically endangered when there's no change as it was expected during the time when um, these uh, assessments were done. Uh, what you would note as well is that uh, a lot of those critically endangered species were downgraded to endangered. As you can see, the graph of the endangered species is increasing. Another thing to note is that uh, we've uplisted a species that were, we uplisted three species that were listed as critically endangered, and now they are critically endangered, possibly extinct, and now we'll give you the two example, I'll show you the two example later on. Another thing to note is that um, a number of least concerned species um, have also dropped, uh, which is not good news because they have increased in the threat status. And uh, to say, uh, looking at this, we should be very worried because a number of our proteas are facing um, a price, I mean, they are under a lot of stress. And 70% uh, of the proteas that we have updated, we've noted that they are of um, mm -hmm. conservation concern now. So um, these are the, this is the summary of um, the species that we have updated. So 52 were uplisted, 79 were downlisted and 248 remain in the same uh, category. So the reason for um, the increase in status um, of these proteas or the increase in categories for these proteas is because um, many of the protea species have um, highly restricted ranges and it make them more vulnerable to the spread of uh, invasive species, diseases, um, changes in their natural fire cycle, which is also linked to climate change as well as a uh, loss of um, habitat, mainly to um, agriculture and uh, development. So from the graph, you'd, you'd note that alien invasives are the one that 
plays a big role in uh, the, the threat. In the, they play a role. In, uh, they are mostly affecting species, and they um, are of concern in the areas where they, the species are found. And um, another thing to note is that there's also um, the changes in species dynamics. This is mostly due to uh, species hybridizing with uh, planted plants. And uh, also there's parasites which are parasitizing on the species. Another thing to note from the graph is that um, the habitat where the species are found is um, getting degraded. That is mainly due to um, Inappropriate land management led to the lack of fire. As we know that uh, proteas um, do well in, in, in areas that are burned. They, 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 they regenerate well uh, when in bad areas. So um, another thing is also um, to note under habitat degradation is um, groundwater extraction, uh, especially for plants that are found near the agricultural fields because they uh, they extract water maybe for irrigation, and in a way, it also affects the species in those areas. Um, to note, um, under habitat loss, it's a, most of the loss was in the past, and um, some in, in other areas it had stopped. So um, habitat loss is not much of an issue now, and um, but it was mainly due to agriculture. Uh, urban and rural developments, as well as uh, plantations in the past. Another thing to note here is that um, the species um, harvested for cut flower industry, and um, they are also affected by harvesting. And um, also we noted that um, species, um, also the recruitment of species was also an issue. And uh, some species are affected by occurring in small areas and they have low densities. And there's also a uh, limited dispersal between these restricted ranges. And um, also droughts were noted in the previous years, as we all know that uh, the Western Cape has been experiencing a lot of um, droughts uh, in the past years. Um, also, climate change is also playing a role in, in, in the is a threatening factor to this uh, process. Uh, so I'll just I picked up a few examples to show um, how the data that uh, we get from our volunteers, from INET and from the protein access was used. So um, yeah, this is a Locospermum saxosperma, saxo, saxosum, uh, which uh, occurs in the border of Bumalang and Bopo. The species is only known from uh, like Four locations. It is locally abandoned globally and it is assessed as this concern. But uh, the, the portion that occurs here in South Africa only forms 5% of the global population. So for that reason, we, we did not um, downgrade the, the, the status because the nearest uh, population is like over 500 kilometers away from it. And they are also. Um, uh, the threats, potential threats to the species, which is like uh, the lack of fire and uh, element like plant invasion of the grasslands where it's found. And um, the population, uh, it has like less than 250 mature individuals. And for that reason, uh, the, the population is likely to be extinct should anything happen to it. Um, this is another example of a protein species that was um, uplisted, which this one has a very restricted range known from uh, very few locations. And uh, those locations are continuing to decline as a result of a degradation uh, in inappropriate uh, management of land, like a lack of fire, as well as the collecting for firewood. And where this population occurs, the, it has been incorporated into a holiday resort, and it is highly unlikely that it, it will um, experience any natural fire cycle or it will be maintained. The fire cycle will be maintained. So, for that reason, the species recruitment is um, highly um, affected. So, we have listed this one from um, 
vulnerable to endangered. Um, another example is from the Eastern Cape to show that also we have species that don't uh, change in the categories. Uh, so for the Eastern Cape, I drew up, picked up the Forea recondito, which is critically rare. This, um, the area where the species found is experiencing like little human impact and uh, it has no severe threat. And for that reason, uh, we listed this one as, uh, we kept the status of critically rare, which is a South African category. So where it occurs, it is uh, locally common and it's in the mountain areas. Um, as I've mentioned, we have uplisted uh, three species to critically endangered, possibly extinct. Uh, the first one is uh, Sorolocephalus palustris, which is endemic in the Bochafel um, area. This one has not been found at the type locality besides the searches during the Protea Atlas project. And it's last, um, it was last confirmed um, to be seen in 1984. And um, another one is um, a Sorolocephorus which was last recorded in the 1980s. And um, the surveys that were done also uh, were unsuccessful. So with these two, I would like to challenge the crew groups in the Western Cape to look for them and uh, hopefully one day they will find them. So we listed these ones as possibly extinct because we currently have no idea what is um, happening around this area. I mean, we don't know what is happening about the species, whether it's still there or not. And um, I'd like to thank all the people that have contributed towards updating the red list status and all the groups and also the funders. Uh, with, with, without your data, we would not have been able to update all the assessments. And we are proud to have been able to contribute towards the comprehensive update of all the Southern Hemisphere proteas. Thank you.